so good evening. Welcome everybody to the book club. Uh, we are almost at the 100 point after the lockdown started. So uh, it's been great going, meeting everybody and having these wonderful books to discuss. Now today we have, as I said in my message, a young man in his 70s is us today with his remarkable book and the even more remarkable story therein. So I'm sure you're all eager to meet him. And uh, we have Suyash Kabra, who's going to introduce him and be in conversation with him uh, to discuss the book. So uh, let me just say something about Suyash. Uh, Suyash is an IT guy, and uh, he used to come to our meetings at Gyan Adab and sit in the back row and listen quietly and go away. And one fine day, we were able to persuade him to agree to make a presentation. And there was no looking back thereafter. He made an excellent presentation. And when he's a valuable member of the book club, that is when he deigns to come. Because again, he's become absent for a very long time. Badri, you have to be congratulated that it is because of you that he's here today. <laughs> so um, now Badri is a man with many dreams. And uh, many of you might say, hey, I have many dreams too, but he has realized them. That's the wonderful thing. I love his spirit. Now, when he contacted us and um, showed me his book, I was absolutely entranced because here is a man who has started with nothing, you know, no advantages or anything and had the imagination to think big and had the courage and the determination to follow up, you know, with all the grit required and to make them happen. So, Suyash, over to you to introduce Badri. Thank you, Moini. And I'm sure I'll make, make, a, make it a point to be regular in the book club again. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Suyash Kabra, a fellow book lover and part of the book club team. When Satish shared the excerpts of the book for today's session in our WhatsApp group, I was thrilled to discover that the author is my relative and has been an inspiration to my eldest sister's family, and he is now to me. He is a man rooted in devotion to God and has a philanthropic bent, who came from a humble background, who built a fortune and legacy for his family by sheer determination, intellect, and desire to push the limits in every situation. Please welcome Mr. Badri Baldavaji to take us on an amazing journey. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Over to you, Kakaji. And uh, until he's ready, I just want to say that uh, this book is the story of his drive to London. Okay, I think he's ready. Over to you. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming. Thanks, Satish, to enroll me as a club member. Mohini to permit me to present my book. And of course, Mr. Abid Lalani is there to help us on technical aspects. Thank you. And Suyas, you know, uh, came up, volunteered that, you know, he would like to introduce me. I said, fine. Uh, well, uh, basically, let me just tell you that I'm a chartered accountant. And I was, in, uh, I was an employee for a long 18 years. And then I started my own business with uh, zero finance with me, no office, no telephone, nothing. And then, you know, I, I had certain dreams and I tried to achieve it. But uh, ultimately, I was just thinking one day, what is it that made me live my life? These are nothing but the dreams, the dreams I had right from my childhood. Uh, just before I uh, just go to the details, let me run a 60 seconds video, which, which tells about, about what exactly is this you know, book about. <laughs>
Now, when I tried to answer the question, the, it, it began that, you know, I went for some of my adventure trips. When I uh, came back for, uh, after a couple of them, uh, my daughter, Meeta, who very much lives in Pune, uh, she suggested, why don't I write blogs on my, uh, to share my experiences? I started writing blogs on, after every trip. And when there were over 100 and all these things, my son-in-law, Naveen, he suggested, Papa, why don't you compile all your stories into a book uh, so that you know others can share your experiences and take whatever advantage out of it. I, in any case, I was just thinking as to how to share the experiences. And it was a trigger for me from Naveen that you know uh, I write the book. And it, so I started recollecting the points right from my childhood, from my mother, from my, I collected the stories from my mother, sisters, my elders, and I compiled this book. Uh, and it take, took practically seven years for me to write up my stories. And it was as big as 1,250 pages. I had to cut it short, shrink it, shrink again and again, to the extent that you know, it came down to 380 pages. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a, a torture for the readers. And I didn't want to hide the book in, in volumes. Yes. And that's how this, one of my dreams of publishing the book you know, came true. Now, when I say I dream, uh, it's just dreaming alone. We all dream. Just dreaming alone doesn't you know, uh, make your dreams come true. So I divided them, them in, uh, in uh, three portions. One is you have to, daydreaming is a must in life. You should do that. And after dreaming, do not keep quiet. If you, if you like the incident and if you think you have a hunger to achieve it, you should explore, you should start planning and then face the challenges which comes on the way and discover and achieve them. Uh, I think if I remember properly, I had my first instance, which was an absolute total failure. And uh, I have, I learned a lot out of it. And then I started really planning the things properly. Now I had several, uh, I, uh, you know, journeys in my life. I don't like the normal journeys, you know, just go and sit in you know, a five-star hotel and enjoy and relax. Unless there is some adventure portion in, the, in a particular trip, I would never enjoy it. And in my case, when I say some portion, I, I mean 90 to 95% should be adventure. You know. That should be the challenging thing. And, you know, I had uh, here mentioned some, uh, shown some of the pictures of North Pole, South Pole, Uganda, and, you know, my, uh, off-roading, uh, Kailash Mansoro, etc., etc. Now, out of the long list of my journeys, uh, I have just listed a few of them uh, here just to give you an idea as to what exactly the book covers. Uh, besides this, it covers a lot of other journeys or book covers a lot of journeys also. So I have shared the experiences of my visit to North Cape, 1983. And this will be ever remembered in my life because this was the trip where I had 46 hours. For some reason, I had to drive nonstop for 46 hours in Norway. Now, when I was in seventh standard, there was a, a lesson. Uh, they said, you know, they're, they're, you know, how the night and day are formed, you know, how they come up, you know, and there was a football in in the center and there were some tennis balls all around. They said, you know, this is how it happens. And while doing that, they explained that there are places in the world which are, which have 24 hours a day and 24 hours night. And uh, the nights and day, they prolong for six, six months a year. The sun sets in and, you know, rises once in six months. There is, to some of, in some of the places, there is nothing north to it. There are some places there is no south to it. 
it all looked, you know, sounded crazy to me. But I had to accept it because if I don't write that way, I will never get marks. But I said, I should, I will be convinced only if I go and see this place. So that was a dream form when I was, you know, around 12 or 13 years age. And that's how this knot cap came up. Then I, have, I had a Badrinath drive. Uh, it was supposed to be a 10 hour, uh, 15 days uh, train drive, but it turned out to be a 45 days car drive uh, because I missed my train for some business reasons. And I said, I'm not going to change my uh, schedule. So the car was just standing in front of me. I said, come on, Pushpa, let us load ourselves. So my, myself, Pushpa, and three of my children, you know, we just sat in the car and we just left with two hours advance notice. We left for a 45 days car trip. You know, that's how, you know, I, 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 once I decide, I make sure that, you know, I do it, you know. Then we had a trip to Kailash Mansarovar. Uh, we visited Mansarovar, then we went around what we call Kailash Parikrama. Uh, Kailash Man. Uh, and the experiences were so wonderful, so wonderful. Doesn't matter, we had to stay without any food for three days. Three full days, we had not, we had nothing to eat. And, and so that was so special for me. And then we had a trip to Antarctica, South Pole, that will be ever remembered for me because that was an occasion when I could have the company for 18 days of Mr. Peter Hillary. Peter Hillary is the Edmund Hillary's son, the first summiteer of Mount Everest. Uh, and it was a very, very inspirational uh, meeting with him all the time. And uh, that inspired me that, you know, uh, rather I had a talk with them. I was already 60 or 62 by then. So I said, look, I am 62. I want, I have an intention to go to Mount Everest, at least see what it is. He said, why? I said, in the year, in, uh, in my eighth standard or ninth standard, when I was still 13, 14 years, I had a lesson in my school uh, that Mount Everest was declared as the highest mountain in the year 1852. And after that, every, everyone from the world wanted to summit it. And from all, the, all over the world, best of the summiters, mountaineers came, but they could not climb it for 101 years. It took Edmund Hillary, Edmund Hillary was the first person who, who uh, you know, summited it. And that was after 101 years of attempts by uh, many mountaineers. So I said, what sort of mountain it should be? You know, um, I should go and at least see that mountain as to what it is. And if possible, summit it. And this was in, when I was 14, 50 years, but the economic conditions, my, you know, time, uh, my engagements for, uh, uh, my own family, for uh, my employers, for my business did not permit me to go to the place. But uh, that dream was still alive in my, in my life. And after 51 years, I could make it, you know. Uh, and at that time, it was 63 years. And normally when, you know, people go to Mount Everest, they go in a group of 10. But I said, no, I want to really experience it. So I was, I trekked that place solo. And I was just on my own for 18, day, 18 days walking, uh, you know, uh, 
on the mountains, on the snow and climbing, getting tired, getting problems, solve them and you know, uh, but continue. And even when I had a guide with me, either I used to tell him, be, you know, leave one hour before he used to, the, if he was to start at four o'clock, I would start the trekking three in the morning. So that, you know, I keep away from him. And once he catches me up, because they have a uh, higher speed, then I made sure that, you know, I said, you go ahead and I'm going to join you because I just wanted to be alone, you know. And that experience was very, you know, some, in fact, you know, that transferred from my character uh, after that 18 days of solo walk. Then uh, North Pole, uh, we went to North Cape in 1983 with a 46 hours drive, but 90 degrees north, the actual North Pole was not accessible at that time. I tried my best, it was not possible, but I was looking for it. But somewhere in 2005 or 2006 or seven, one ship, uh, a Russian ship, uh, started going to North Pole. And the moment I came to know about it, I immediately wanted to make the trip because I wanted to be there on North Pole, 90 degree north. And only 110 people could go there every year, not more than that because of the, uh, for environment reasons. And uh, I made sure I managed or I maneuvered such a way that, you know, I should visit that the moment I knew about it. And in the very next trip, I made that trip. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that me and my wife were the first Indians to land on 90 degree north. Not only that, we had a polar plunge, you know, where the, it's, it's nothing, 90 degree north is nothing but a sheet of ice. So, you know, they break the ice and there, there was a small, Bond was made and you know, at minus 30 degrees, you are supposed to take a dip in that. And uh, very few people would uh, try to do that. Uh, and my wife did it uh, as we were talking. And after my wife had that polar plunge, I had no option to, but to go and fall in the uh, pond where you know, you're supposed to swim and come back in 90 seconds. Uh, after, if you stay more, for more than 90 seconds, it is, uh, it could be fatal. So, uh, so we're the first Indians, in fact, to take North Polar Plunge. Then uh, we had a Kailash Mansarovar Yatra, second time. And this time I had taken 100 people with me and I, I was leading, I made all the arrangements and this was for a charitable purpose to earn or to save some money for the ashram which badly needed uh, funds and uh, the Swamiji there was, uh, was never in favor of asking donations. So when he said, you know, if you can manage, get donations, I said, no, instead of collecting donations, I would prefer to give some service to the people and then save that money for the ashram. And so I took 100 people, it was a big risk. And this has been elaborately explained as to what, what all we went through that trip in my book. Now, Iceland, normally they go in a group of eight to 10 cars, but I wanted to have my own experience. Uh, see, if you go in group, there are definitely advantages, but the disadvantage is that, you know, you have to go move along with the schedule and, you know, you don't face much of problems because there is someone to take care of it. But I wanted to go on my own. So I had a solo car drive with my wife and my one grandchild. That was in 2015. Then uh, one day when we were flying to London, uh, I was, uh, with, I was with my wife. My second daughter is in uh, UK. And uh, we were going to just meet her. And normally my wife takes the side seat, window seat, and I'm always in the side seat or the second seat. 
on that occasion, a, a nice lady, almost of my age, came and sat next to me, you know, and I was in the middle. Uh, after a few, I was happy, all right, I will be able to spend a good time, two nice ladies sitting next to me. But in, the, in a few minutes, my wife suggested, why don't we change our seats? You know, you come to the corner seat. You, know. uh, you understand why. Uh, any case, I was on the window seat. It was a blessing in disguise for me. When we were flying over the Alps mountain, I could see the mountains so beautifully glaring, you know. It was a full moon day. And then I just told Pushpa, I said, look, Pushpa, they, are, they look so beautiful from the window here. So how about, you know, traveling to London through them rather than, you know, flying by the flight. She said, oh, then ke sapne dekhte raho. Well, uh, when we returned back from the trip, I collected all possible maps I had collected a few more from the market and started seriously looking into how I could make this trip. I will come to that you know, later on uh, uh, a, a little more in details. And then uh, we uh, completed the trip of Mumbai to London you know, in 2017. And at that time, I was 73 years in age. And uh, it was a 72 days uh, long trip. I would say 70 days trip. Let me not call it long. And uh, crossing over 19 countries, 22,000 kilometers drive. And even after returning, and then once I returned from them, I took over this book as a very serious project and tried to complete that book. And in the meantime, I was making my trips, you know, uh, for example, you know, we had camps on the top of the van and then, you know, we used to stay in forests to watch the animals, you know, and uh, all those thrills and experiences, et cetera, et cetera. And I continue to do, do that doesn't matter what the age is, you know. Now, uh, I come back to the title of the book to, and say to achieve the dreams, as I said, first we have to un analyze the dreams. What are the expected challenges and find solutions? Then explore them. That is, you know, find out what could be the teething issues. Uh, there, could, there would always be teething issues and, you know, how to resolve them and then discover, discover in the sense, you know, uh, achieve it and while achieving it, you will always have some issues or other. So uh, you should be prepared for it. Now, I, let me explain uh, they, that when we talk about the first portion daydreaming, these are the dreams that you get before you sleep. अपने को बचपन में बताया जाता है कि यार दिन में दिन में सपने मत देखो मैं तो बोलता हूँ दिन में सपने देखना चाहिए सी वंस यू डू दैट यू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग हाउ टू अचीव दैन इफ यू डोंट ड्रीम देन व्हाट इज इट यू आर गोइंग टू डू सो डे ड्रीमिंग इज अ मस्ट इन लाइफ एंड द डे ड्रीमिंग हैव नो लिमिट यू कैन द ओनली लिमिट इज दैट यू नो योर एबिलिटी टू इमेजिन सो यू नो कम्स फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट the only thing is your determination now this is becoming quite you know theoretical let me give you some practical examples so you know what exactly i mean by this you know daydreaming and you know then planning and achieving etc cetera, etc cetera. so i will just take one or if time permits i will take the second otherwise i will give a little more detail on one of my trips. Uh, on and i will take my uh, favorite uh, journey that is trek to mount everest camp base camp i told you as to what made me to uh, uh, go to mount everest 
And yeah, uh, I will come a little more in details, but again, uh, let me give you two more examples what, what the daydream means. One is that night and day I have already explained and then, you know, when I was, when I had my SSLC results, I was declared in the first, unexpectedly I was declared first class uh, pass. Everyone in, from the family and from the society, they came and patched me, oh, he's such an intelligent boy, you know, this and that, he will be a wonder, you know, he'll do wonders to the family, et cetera, et cetera. And I was very happy because it all right, unexpectedly so many appreciations have come, excuse me. And I should do, continue to do the same way in future. But a week after that, I saw the, on the headlines of the na uh, national newspaper, the photos of three students which appeared on the top page and they were the rank holders of the university. I said, just because I got my marks in first class and SSLC, I was so much patted. Why not I try to achieve this, uh, you know, uni university top rank so that, you know, I could also be on the front pages of the uh, newspapers. And, and naturally, you know, that will give me much more of uh, appreciation from the public in general, not only from my society and family, but from the college, from the university, from the lectures, everyone. So that became my dream. I should achieve, you know, university first class, a, a university topper. So for the next four years, I will completely engross myself in that is, uh, you know, in education, various methods of learning, and you know, there were ups and downs and all those things. And for four years, I did not go for any social functions of the family. I did not attend to the guests. And I had an exclusive room, which was being called Bhutka room, you know, the Bhut Ate the But, you know, I completely, I wanted an exclusive book, uh, room, so I stayed there for four years, and three years rather, three out of four years, and made sure that I got my first rank in the university. So this is again a dream I thought of, a dream I achieved after planning for these things. Then, Right from my child, right from my, uh, you know, graduation, I had an intention to be a businessman. But my the economic situation, my family conditions did not permit me to go in business because you don't know in business whether you are going to make profit or loss. And I had uh, 11 siblings plus my mother. Uh, I have to make sure they were all younger to me. And I was the eldest and I had to make sure that, you know, their careers are not disturbed. They get the proper education, proper clothing and proper, you know, at least the basic lifestyle. And so I went for employment. I worked for 18 years because that was the time when my uh, siblings had reached to a position where they were graduates, postgraduates, some of them went overseas for studies, etc. And then I said, now this is the time I should enter in business. When I entered business, again I dreamt that you just doing business for no for business sake is not good enough. I should have a target. So I dreamt that I should achieve the highest position in whichever industry I enter in. And I happened to enter in stainless steel houseware business and I made sure that I give a service to the industry in such a way that I am recognized in the industry. So ultimately, after 
about 20 to 22 years of service uh, with the in the industry i got the i was elected as the president the highest one and not only that there was one more dream i had but that was not under my control but i knew that if i keep on giving my best i will be able to get that and after a couple of years couple of years after i left as president i got the udyog ratna award in 2017 and that was the highest award in my industry so so these are all the dreams which i dreamt and i achieved them how i achieved them you know this these are all shared in my book now let me ex uh, explain the second part exploring what do we mean by exploring so here i say greatest challenge in life is to explore the abilities within you you know that is the biggest challenge in life actually so in to achieve that you believe in yourself if you believe in yourself your dream will come true and one can achieve anything in life if you have a burning desire to achieve it and be adamant be jiddi bachpan mein bolte hai na jidd mat karo main to bolta hu acche kaam ke liye jidd karna zaruri hai be jiddi be adamant that i'll face the challenges i'll make sure that my dreams come true and it's your will power which ultimately gets you success now i will explain a little these three aspects uh, taking an example of uh, mount everest I, i could pick up any of these so i but i thought you know let me just pick up this mount everest now he, here i am trying to explain what i mean by uh, what are the cha- by pre planning and then planning and then you know achieving so when i decided to do everest after uh, having a advice from peter hilary what that if i have to go to mount i stay in bombay so we are always accustomed to 20 to 25 to 35 degree temperature but if i have to go to everest trek to everest then i should face low temperature then i said okay it doesn't matter i i was i was in antarctica north pole i was in south pole so i'll be able to stand to that but you know in antarctica it was a few days in a ship you know those sort of things but here i have to keep walking throughout the day and then you know relax in the night when you are at minus 30 degrees and then you know so i said any case i am accustomed to this i think i should be able to face it so my inner confidence said ki yes you will be able to do it and another problem when you go to everest is you, you can foresee this in in advance that you should have there will be low level of oxygen i said i have gone to kailash which is about uh, where you know at one place you have to reach practically about 20000 feet altitude and everest bc is is little less than that so i should be able to do it i got myself convinced stamina i said you know i have gone to amarnath i have gone to mount kailash where i was trekking for you know when we were on amarnath we were trekking for five days mount kailash we were trekking you know on, on a steep uh, uh, mountain uh, for two days so all right instead of those two days and five days i will have to do it for maybe you know 10 days and come then start climbing down so that should not be a problem i got myself convinced to be all right i should be able to do it then the age came in picture i was 63 years age so they said that's not the age normally people go there you know when are they are between 35 to 45 so when i was going through the records i found out that this this one mr yuchiro miura of uh, from japan he climb mount everest at the age of 66 so i said i'm still young you know i could still do this and it's 
so fortunate that you know when i was going to uh, trekking to everest at uh, one place i happened to meet this gentleman uh, yuchiro muira because he was trying to establish one more record okay so then the second part is that the uh, second part of the uh, of the planning is that you will always have teething issues and these are the things which pulls you back from your plans and here you have to take a decision a firm decision you 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 don't know will power comes in picture all right i will be able to do it i planned everything then i realized that i have a problem of synco where you know you suddenly get giddiness uh, and particularly when you when you are when you are high at a height so you could fall down at you know drop down any time and i my plan was to go solo so this was quite risky but when i started thinking about it i was taking medicines for last 6 to 8 uh, 6 to 8 years before that and i was in proper conditions except for one or two minor cases so it's okay if i keep if i make sure that i have the medicines at right time i should have no problem doesn't matter i will be able to face it so i decided that syncope is not going to stop me i have lower i, I had lower spondylitis cervical so lower spondylitis i had to compromise with the uh, with my back lower back saying that look my friend i want to go to everest you cooperate with me i will cooperate with you i'll give you a nice cushion belt so that you know you will feel comfortable and make sure that i am comfortable on my trip and that worked and my back listened to me and made sure that i i i, I complete the trip uh cervical again i have to put out cervical i said look cervical i will make sure that every day morning before i do anything i will attend to you i will make sure that you know i do proper neck exercises etc neck and you know chest exercises etc so that you are not uncomfortable but you make sure that i am not uncomfortable work just two weeks before i left sorry these are all the teething problems you will get in every journey it's not that it is only in this uh, just two weeks before i was to go i was playing squash and when i came home i realized that the my joint of the uh, toe right toe was you know almost uh, loose and it was giving severe pain so i went to the doctor well known to us uh, artho i told him that this is the problem and uh, i ha- my plan is that after two weeks i have to go to uh, for trekking to everest he said okay doesn't matter you can go to there but you will have to take three months rest give rest to the toe for three months and then you can go i said no i have to go you know in two weeks he said you cannot go i said that's your problem not my problem my problem is that i have to go on this day how you solve it he said okay i will try something so if you are jiddi you will automatically you will get an answer he said i am going to inject something to you and if you are fine you would know within a week and if you are not fine in a week then i i'm sorry i, I don't know what to do with it i said okay try so immediately on the spot he started giving me injection which took half an hour for me to uh, lie down and that toe problem after one week disappeared at least reduced in two weeks time it completely disappeared and i tell you it's almost how many years now is about 15 years from then i have not got that problem again so if you are strong enough if your will power is good then you know everything will support you the worst thing happened to me was the two days before i left the my i decided the day the 10th of august i should leave so that i reach everest रेकॉर्ड करता है तर रेकॉर्ड करून ठेवा
बंद करू हॅलो कॅन यू कंटिन्यू हॅलो कॅन यू कंटिन्यू हॅलो येस प्लीज कंटिन्यू आय आय डोंट नो हू दॅट वॉज एव्हरी हिअर प्लीज मेक शुअर युअर माइक आर स्विच ऑफ Yes, Badri. Please continue. Yeah. I, I am Badri. Yeah. When you have photographs and stories about the uh, uh, trips, etc., what happened? You should have photographs of that. Talk about to the say wherever you went, etc. Do, do that. Everyone's waiting to talk about their journeys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I normally, when some people ask for that, normally I refer to the book. You know. <laughs> no, but see. <laughs> okay i got you so let me just complete this uh, yeah. i will take your question yeah please uh, yeah no the agent said just two days earlier i i, I cannot receive you at the airport because on 10th of august there are general elections in nepal 10th august 2010 and no one no civilian is permitted to uh, you know drive or walk on the way except to the polling booth i can't come so it was a big problem any case throughout the night i worked and i made sure that i get another agent who had connect contact with the military people there and i made i i, I got i engage him for my trip so it is important that i reach there on 10th august so that i could be on uh, at the mount everest on 20th of august which is a full moon day and i wanted to see mount everest on a full moon uh, full moon night uh fine i got the agent but i went when i went to the uh, airport i was told that there are no flights to nepal to kathmandu on that day because of the elections all flights have been cancelled and that was uh, those days there were no direct flights we had to go via delhi i went I, and so in bombay they told me do not proceed but i proceeded up to delhi and i made sure there is a story i made sure that you know i went with the polling officers who were deputed to kathmandu on that day to attend because india was looking after the polling arrangements at that time and made sure that i landed on that place on 10th of august so that short of determination you should have to uh, uh achieve your dreams you know then once we left for the place there were a lot of lots and lots of stories oh, and you have to you start third or fourth day you are already you will be on the zero degree then sub uh, zero you start from there I, we had no rooms at many places because at least now there are uh, many places where you have the rooms but at that time there were very limited rooms when I, when i say room they are nothing but you know four uh, plywood uh, uh, walls and one on the top that's how it, they call it room you see i had to sleep in the open there were cuts in on face etc i wish you know i showed them the uh, show you the those pictures you know so these sort of problems were there and if you can face them you can achieve and you can discover your dream so what i am trying to say achieving has no relation to the age and particularly when i went for the trip to london from mumbai people challenged me tum pagal hai tumhara dimag nahi chalta hai and how can you how you know at the age of 73 how can you think of uh, driving for 72 days and that too with your wife so the more people talked about it you know i i, I got additional tonic every time so i said not only i will prove that a 73 years can do it i will also prove that the youngest can also do it and my granddaughter volunteer to join me she was just 9 years volunteer to join me for this trip and she did it so i am thankful to her her guts thankful to her parents that is my second daughter seema and nilesh for having sent her with us with the, you know taking all sorts of risk for 72 days you know you know what a, a lovely set of uh, 
hits I have, you know, first one saying that you write a book, second one saying that, you know, uh, you take my child with you and, you know, do whatever you feel like, you know. So, uh, age has no relation, that's what I wanted to say. Let problems not dominate you. You dominate the problems. For example, I had a broken toe, a semi-broken or painful toe, or so many problems. You dominate them and you know try to convince them rather than you know you get dominated by them. Then again, one thing we should realize is always major problems take over the minor problems. We forget the minor problem when we when we were going to the uh, to London. There was a our screen got a hole because a, you know a, a small uh, conker hit the screen. So we were just thinking, oh, how do we solve this problem? This cauliflower-like thing is coming up. And after a, a few days, we had a smash of the screen. The this, you know, screen smashed completely because a star came and hit the thing. We forgot about the old problem that you know we had a. A, a hole in the screen. And secondly, if you, if you look at the history so far in this world, no problem has ever survived. They always come and go. So why should we worry about it? The, the problems are there, they come, they are challenges, face the challenge, get out of it and you know, come out of it and you know, make sure that you achieve what you want. Of course, physical fitness is a must. You have to maintain that if we want to uh, achieve these sort of things. And support from the family is essential. Now, let me uh, just, okay, I will come to that a little later, okay? Then this is, I decided that I should go to London. Came back, had all the maps, etc., with me. Uh, this is about my road trip from Mumbai to London, which I referred to you earlier. I will have to go. I think quite fast. Uh, when I came back, studied the maps, this is how it looks. On the north, you will find that there are mountains. On the east, there are mountains again and hardly a place to go to the east. On the south, there is no way because it's mountain. Of course, on the west, uh, there are plains you could go through but I wanted to go and come back. But this is a place, if you just follow that west, you can go but cannot come back because there is Pakistan and Afghanistan and those sorts of places. So I was just trying, wondering what I do. Then ultimately, it's a long story. We found out a way and we made sure that we made this trip. And this is how we went to London. You know, all through, instead of to go to the west, we had to take a right route. If I go, Straight from here to here, it takes about seven to 8,000 kilometers, but this took 22,000 kilometers for us. Uh, I'm rushing through, and this is my grandchild. Uh, that's my lovely wife. And uh, we knew that we will have to go through long drives. We knew that we will have, we have strict vegetarians. We do not, my wife doesn't take even onions and garlic. Uh, so we will have to accept that challenge and we're prepared for it, you know, and one should be prepared for it. So this was the expected problems for which we were prepared. At least we made the preparations. And then we had a lot of, these are the teething problems. Again, I'm just giving you that every trip has, will have all these problems. This is the general nature of problems you have. I had no registration of the Sorry, I had no car registration certificate because the seller of BMW X, I purchased a new car for the trip. Uh, you know, the, he promised me that he would do, but he did not do anything. And my time was passing. I had to send the details to all the countries, you know, to get the various permissions. I did not have Uzbekistan uh, visa because, you know, the, this little stamp which they have, they exhausted those stamps and the, we, the passport did not arrive till the day I left. Well, we faced that problem, we re resolved that problem. I lost my international license and, and we realized that we lost them just the previous night. 
of our you know flag off in any case uh, we resolved that and the major issue was my sorry i'm not having to my granddaughter you can see her on crutches just again 10 or 15 15 days earlier to our departure she was in the school she had her uh, she had a fall and she uh, fractured one of her ankles and she was walking on uh, two crutches and she said nana i will not be able to come because i'm on crutches i said no we are going to come come to M mumbai with crutches and we will make sure that you are comfortable enough to make this trip there is 72 days i said yeah it doesn't matter it's just 72 days you know any case we resolved all these issues and uh, we have no enough time to discuss those things here then we had a wind skills crash some a star came in from the front when we were at the speed of 130 kilometers an hour and probably she wanted to hug me but she did not realize that there is a glass in between me and and the uh, and her uh, she came and crashed over the and it was the windscreen completely smashed at one stage i referred to you that you know uh, cooperation of your family is very important i tell you for most of these trips if my i think all practically all the trips except mount everest my wife accompanied and if she was not there i don't know what uh, how far i would have uh, able to realize my dreams uh, she is a major contributor in my life for this and what happened is you know whatever food we vegetarian food we carried with us we thought at least once we will have western food and once somehow we'll manage with the salad and you know whatever western food we get at the place rice or something like that but when we are crossing uh, myanmar and laos thailand and laos and uh, major part of china and you know we realize that there is nothing to eat for which in some places there are not even rice not even bread so whatever we wanted to complete till we reach europe was completed by the time we reached china so we were running short of vegetarian food so i sent a message to my son saying that look on so and so day we will be at chengdu in china that's about four or five days after that please courier the plus and you know rotlas we had enough pickles and uh, chutney and what not you know snacks etc but you know we are we do not have these things at least you send them so that we can survive he did not answer we went to chengdu make uh, and we were sure that you know anand my son would not fail in his uh, in in these sort of things but we went to chengdu the hotel ask for the our parcel they said there is nothing for us so wondering still we have a few weeks to spend before we reach touch europe nicely at 12 o'clock in the night somebody gives me a call at the you know a ring at the uh, uh, hotel room and when i open it surprise anand is there with personally with all the tiplas i said what the hell how could you how could you come i said i am managed no you wanted the plus i have brought the tape plus i said look my dear you could have sent it by courier he said papa think about this if the courier guy this is china if courier guy had delayed by one day you would have suffered a lot so i thought the only the best way to do is that i go personally and do it so from mumbai it came all the way to chengdu china and made sure that he delivered the tape plus and that kept us alive you know for next few weeks and that's why the cooperation of the family is very important you know i had as i said you know i had wonderful set of child who 
children who suggested for the book, the wonderful children who were who delegated this only child to us for 72 days, you know. So the point is one dream is not enough because there is always one more. Multiple dreams must be there. If you have just one dream, that's not good enough. Ek ho jata hai, what next? You know, you just keep on doing it. And if you do that, you really will enjoy your life. You will live the life you want to. Uh, now I come to the uh, book part of it. I have given you some instances to make, to give you practical examples of it. And these sort of stories are there in each of my journeys. And there are quite a few journeys explained in the books. The, what are the unique credits in this book? This is, forward is written. The, I have sent, I sent this book to a few Guinness World Record holders and even to certain important places. I got the foreword after reading the book. The Chief Justice of India, Mr. R.C. Lahoti, he, uh, you know, was, he said, you know, I will write the foreword for this book. And then I had words of appreciation from multiple Guinean world record holders, which are there as a part of the book. The style of the book, what I wrote was a, a normal style, but Mr. Akshir Gajiria, he's a renowned writing coach. He, he transfer, you know, transformed the whole book into a different, a dialogue type, a movie type. You know, I wanted, I just told him that I want the book to, appear as if you know people are watching the television and it really he transformed to that uh, you know my uh, thanks to him for doing such a wonderful job Mr. Akshay Gajriya. Then this is edited by Mita Kabra, my own daughter. She is the editor of a national, she is an editor, she is a good writer and a, she edited the book of a uh, uh, a national award winning book, uh, which was in fact uh, uh, inaugurated or launched by Ratan Tata. Now, this Mr. R.C. Joshi uh, Lahoti said, he said, it would be interest and inspire the youth, maybe prompt and push them into traveling and trade and trading into adventures. And really, I tell you, I had quite a few calls and uh, after writing the book, this book, the reader said, after reading this book, we made sure that we at least started travel, traveling, which otherwise we never used to do, and had adventure as a part of the trips. You know? Then these are the Guinness World Record holders, Sanjay and Tushar. They said, you know, this. He's a seasoned traveler, an experienced mountain and obsessive driver, and a hungry explorer, you know, after reading this book. Then Alan Mallory, uh, their entire family of five summited Mount Everest. They are the world record holders. Uh, and he said, I immediately understood. I happened to meet him on my way to Everest. And he, he said, you know, but I immediately understood Badri's passion for continuing to push the bar higher and live life to the absolute fullest. You know, that's what you could see in the book. Then Peter Hilary, he said, one dream is not enough, is more than the title. It's a philosophy which he has followed. Now, talking about the uh, book, Mr. Vinay Jain, the Vitti's group of institutions, he says, you know, when he read the book, he said, is an inspiration for people who miss the spark in their lives. It's beautifully narrated, including his remarkable adventures with elegance ease, making you be a part of his journey. You know, th that's what I wanted it to be, you know, as if, you know, people are readers, of, you know, uh, traveling with me. Then this is a professor from finance, University of Central Florida. Contents are delightfully fascinating and riveting. Okay, now I come to the almost the last portion of it. What the readers say. 
today we have assembled to understand what the book is like. So I'm just uh, telling in short. I will just, uh, in short, I will run through them. Says, one says struggles and problems your story of struggles and problem solving is more realistic. The book is perfect for any age and, and anybody. The book is very captivating. This is the MLA from uh, Karnataka. Then a professor says author must have a very special gene in his DNA, coding for adventure and daring and thrill, and of course for ex excelling. Then a little girl says, your adventures are unpredictable and filled with full of thrilling experience. And let me explain you, uh, your adventures are predictable, unpredictable and filled with full of thrilling experience. Yesterday I received a comment from my, uh, I have four grandchildren, the fourth one who is just crossed six and now she's uh, seven years in age. And she said, Dadu, I have read the entire book. She's six years and she has read the book. It's such a simple language. And she says how wonderful the book is. Uh, I, did, I could not add it here, but I received those comments yesterday. That is Arya, my granddaughter. Uh, one advocate says, must read for positive thinkers who wish to live life, live life king size. He says, amazing by its writing. It feels like I am watching a movie. So light and simple to read, masala less, which we get seldom to re read these days. And uh, he's a, t a TV channel uh, operator, uh, owner. He says a fantastic book, every page is written brilliantly. So I think uh, there are many, many more comments, but I, I just added a few of them. This book is being given as present to the students in many of the institutions, uh, as you can see. This is also being distributed as corporate gift to executives and staff of various corporations. And this is available at uh, this, uh, the details of the book are available on all social medias. And it is available at most of the uh, places, including my website badribaldava.com and amazon.com, amazon.in, uh, every, practically everywhere. In the right, right in the beginning when I showed you the video, you know, there were eight, 10 places where uh, media centers where these things are available. And this is available in multiple versions, ebook, paperback, black and white, paperback color, hardbound limited edition. Uh, in made sure of uh, having the pleasure of offering a special 25% dis discount for a limited time till 28th August. And this is available in Pune, uh, at two places in Pune, Daga Brothers uh, Lakshmi Road and Daga Brothers Aon. And I have given these details here. And I think that's how the story goes. Yes, ma'am, I have taken a little more time than what you had allotted, uh, but I try to complete or squeeze in you know, the things possible. Uh, Badri, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I was hoping that you would talk more about um, what is inside the book, you know? Um, stories from journey. Anyway, so um, Suyash, uh, please take over. Suyash has uh, some That's lovely fine. questions to ask. And uh, so yes, please uh, ask the questions. And then other people are welcome to ask questions too. So others present, you can put your questions in the chat box and you can also raise your hand, okay? We will come to you. Let me just answer this, you know, if I go inside the book is nothing but these incidents. All these incidents are packed in that book. So I, uh, the whole thing is I did not want it to generalize and give a preaching in my book. I just wanted to say, this is what I have experienced. This is how I have resolved. Now it is up to you in case something like that comes up in your life, how we are going to face it. I have not done any preaching. So there is nothing much I could say. We are right. Uh, okay, everybody, I welcome you to put on your video screens. Everybody, 
and Suyash go on. They have very little time, so yeah. they will be, have to be nippy. Yes, thanks, Mohini. Uh, Prakashi, first question to you. If your book is picked for screenplay, who do you think can play yours and Pushpaji's role? Uh, okay, before I say, uh, uh, answer this, let me just introduce uh, Pushpa to you. Can you say hello? Come, come and say hello. Yeah, she's on the, she's there on the screen. Not a screen, but easy for people to understand. You have a background, you have a virtual background. Okay, yeah, we, we can see. You. Nothing can stop her coming here. Yeah, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, quickly. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, Please do the background. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Good so, to see you. Good to see you. So you can see from her face that see the Hema Malini is the right person to pick up. <laughs> as, far okay. as, as far as I am concerned, it's a very interesting book. Uh, a question. As far as I am concerned, I will. Uh, I should have put up that uh, photo of mine after doing 18 days trip to Everest. Amitabh Bachchan. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, which three words best describe you as a person? Discipline. Discipline is a must in life. When you go to say places like Everest or North Pole, if you don't follow uh, discipline, you collapse. You know, discipline. And number two, I would say planning. Best planning has to be done. Number three. My character is what next? That's great. I, I always keep asking. Well, uh, uh, now I would like to give chance to anybody else from our uh, uh, participants. If they would like to ask questions. I will just have a last question for uh, Kakaji and then. Who to shut the screen? Oh, this share screen. Uh -huh. uh, could you stop sharing screen, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Let's have gallery view. We can see everybody then. Is that fine? Yes. Mm, I guess so. Yes, Vijay? So, yes. Yeah, okay. Does anyone have, have any questions to ask? Yeah, can I ask something about uh, the way the book is written? Um, obviously, uh, you know, you would need help. And to what extent did your co-writer um, change your own words? I mean, how much was added? Because, by the way, Badri, I want to say that it was very pleasant reading, very pleasant. And your personality comes out as this really cool guy, you know. <laughs> who has a great spirit of adventure and is willing to do anything and carry on. It was great reading. Uh, not a single uh, story or the fact has been added by him. Mm -hmm. Everything, in fact, you know, he had to delete a few because we, had to, we wanted to make the book uh, you know, smaller. Mm -hmm. Uh, but otherwise, except the language, not a single fact has been uh, changed. There he's no he's done a good job of the strategies that he's used. He's an excellent guy. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Sheena, would you like to ask? Any other questions? Yeah, because Sheena has bought the book and she has read it. So, uh, Sheena, I, I would value your response. Hi, uh, I, I've just read about 11 or 12% so far. I haven't completed it um, in time, unfortunately, because it only arrived on Wednesday. But uh, I am very intrigued. I'm sure you addressed this story, but I'm very intrigued in yours and Pushpaji's love story. So I really would like to hear it. And I think everybody here would like to hear it as well. Uh. Okay, I'll come back on that. Let me just think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can, don't, don't be shy about it. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Is it not, is it, have you mentioned it in the book? Have you given it in detail is what I wanted to ask you. Uh, if you ask me, the entire book has reference to Pushpa. As I said, uh, the way 
he uh, you know was with me in my life in my each of my journeys uh, not it is not just the travel alone you know even in my family uh, you know we had issues with our finance with our you know with our, uh, family arrangements etc you know so always with me and just to give you a small uh, incident you know when my younger brother was to be married we had no sufficient finance uh, to some presents to my wife she said look look oh uh, vijay vijay shut your mic i have jewel i have my jewelry with me i don't need to give it to her vijay you know? please shut your mic we can hear you vijay please mute so you know these shots hundreds of such instances but when i started my business i had no office i had no typewriter i had no you know telephone even uh, we used to use neighbors telephone and uh, we had no staff except a office boy uh, she is the one who work in the day for the for the work or for whatever jobs we had to do in kitchen and home she used to take care of the children she used to take care of their studies and still she used to uh badri please unmute you have got muted somewhere along the way yeah so uh, so this is how it was you know Uh, this is all our love story nothing but you know efforts and travel these were these were the major parts of our lives uh, i was wondering if latika would want to say something uh, latika are you there kaveri Kaveri, unmute. Can you? Ah, uh, you need to unmute Kaveri. I'm trying to unmute. Yes. I'm on my. Can you hear me now? Yes, can I can hear you? Okay. Yes, I mean it's a larger than life. This whole uh, account and the story—it's just fascinating and amazing. what one thing which i'm curious about was that polar plunge that was mentioned uh, where i think uh, uh, pushpa if i may call her that she went first what a remarkable woman uh, was there some special gear that had to be worn and were you lowered by a um Uh, lord by a special winch or something how did it happen that polar plunge well we thought of uh, having polar plunge before the reach um, before we reached the actual 90 degree north but once i reached there it was so cold and we were uh, standing on a, a sheet of ice because you know north pole there are, there are uh, there is no earth you know it is just sheet of ice and we, and it's a floating ice actually you know uh, and i was little ghabrified ki nahi yaar bhi nahi karenge to kyun nahi chalega na aisa but i didn't know that this lady is determined to do it and as i was just looking at that pond uh, her dressing suit and just had a plunge la bhai isne kar liya to main nahi karunga to yaar izzat ka sawal hai to kuch karna hi padega so i said you know i should have i should also plunge for it and you know i i did that and i'm happy that i did it because of her Truly amazing! Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, would anyone else like to chime in over here? Or Suyash, you can ask another of your questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, what do you see yourself doing five years from now? Ah, uh, if if permitted. So far, I have not been successful, but I am still after it. Uh. to walk on walk in space okay and till i try that 
probably you know uh, drive through all the five continents in the world and establish a record that I am the senior most to have done that. So these are there on my bucket list. Let's see. And besides this, I have some chota chote dusri bhi bahut jarni sa. But these are the things you know, the major ones I would like to. Very inspiring. Yeah, I have dreamt of it, but you know, I have still not been able to achieve. But I am I am working on it. Great to know you're still dreaming. Uh, what event in your life triggered your passion for traveling and adventure? Oh, mm. uh, well, the major one I would say Peter Hilary. The minor ones are the, are the you know in, in the childhood. कोई भी मुझे challenge करता है तो मैं बोलता कि नहीं यार इसको अनबिलीवेबल लगता है चैलेंज करता है तो मतलब इसको करके ही बताने का है यू नो एंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली ट्रिगर्ड आई डोंट नो इट्स इट वाज हैपनिंग वन आफ्टर द अदर वन आफ्टर द अदर पर आई वुड से फॉर ईच इवेंट देयर वाज अ सेपरेट ट्रिगर फॉर एग्जांपल व्हेन आई सेड यू नो रोड टू लंदन ड्राइव टू लंदन इट वाज इट जस्ट ट्रिगर्ड बिकॉज़ यू नो आई ऑब्जर्व द आल्प्स माउंटेंस you know i went to everest because you know it was a lesson i said you know what is it you know 100 for 101 years people could not go there you know why not i see it you know yeah we know what time the day will change to night and you know we know that you know 12 ghante se zyada nahi lagega fir day aayega aur hamare teacher bolte hai ki acche mahine tak ek continuous raat rahega 6 mahine tak din rahega i said it was not believable for me so the, for each in, incident you know there was different triggers you know that's great so i think uh, uh, you know in life i mean all of us have these experiences of course you know which trigger ideas in our minds most of us just tuck them away we don't act on them we don't take them further but what is special about you is that you actually thought that you could do it and 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 you did so that is what is absolutely marvelous रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉर दिस सेशन Uh, I just like to say that folks like Suyash, uh, you know, offered to take on this session and to conduct it. Uh, you're most welcome. Any time a book appeals to you, just come forward and offer. You know that you would like to take charge of the evening. We'd be happy for you to do it. Okay. So Badri, thank you. Suyash, thank you. Everybody who's here, Sheena, Kaveri, everybody who spoke, and everyone who listened, thank you very much for being here. We look forward to seeing you. um next sunday and um please keep coming thank you very much thank you what's next sunday i don't have, uh 20th is i think alice munro i don't know how i didn't open it yes uh we have the short stories of alice munro next time presented by varsha ghate uh she has already given us the titles because she was to have done this program earlier and it suddenly got cancelled if you remember but i will repost those stories and so everyone can read them and be prepared run away and open secrets yes open secrets and run away those are the stories the title stories from those two collections yes so um thank you thank you everyone Good evening, good night, happy reading. See you next Sunday. Thank you.